I'm gonna sneeze, but I can't sneeze. <laughs> what is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was Math 256. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Math 256 during the 2023 2024 school year with Professor Miranda Holmes Surfton in semester one. There were multiple sections of Math 256 in both semesters of the year, but the course structure and content were relatively the same with some small differences. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignments, and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is Math 256 all about? In this course, you'll be learning all about ordinary differential equations, or ODEs, and how to find solutions to them. You'll learn how to solve first order, second order, and systems of ODEs, how to use Laplace transforms to solve ODEs, Fourier series, and how to find solutions to partial differential equations. And don't worry if all of that sounds very overwhelming, I had no idea what any of this meant before taking the course, and I somehow came out alive. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Math 256 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. And keep in mind that this course structure is specific to Professor Miranda Holmes Surfton's section. Each week you will have three hours of lectures to attend where the professor will discuss the main course concepts through some theory, discussions, and examples. A few things to note about Miranda's lectures though. She writes very fast, she doesn't leave much time in the lecture for people to ask questions, and she's very prone to algebraic mistakes in her work, so watch out for that. She will usually post her notes either an hour before or an hour after the lecture is done, and she'll always give some highly recommended exercises to complete before the next class. In terms of homework, there are five written homework assignments due roughly once every two weeks during the term. These homework assignments generally consist of five to eight questions of moderate to complex difficulty and are designed to help you practice the concepts taught in class. In your homework assignments, you must show all of your work in your solutions before submitting your work as a PDF to Gradescope for grading. One last note about these homework assignments, they are specific only to Miranda's section and none of the other sections have written homework like this. For Miranda's section, there are also some optional web work problem sets for additional practice. What I can say about the other 256 sections is that there are web work assignments instead of written homework for your homework. From what I remember, those web work assignments have limited attempts and are generally a lot easier than the written assignments that we had to complete. But we'll get into that later. In terms of the required materials for this course, you really only need something to write down the solutions to the homework assignments on. This can either be a tablet that can submit a PDF of your work, or you can write on paper and then scan your work into a PDF to submit. Also, some of the homework assignments may require you to use MATLAB, so make sure you're able to access it. There's no required textbook for this course, but it is strongly recommended to be able to read one of the following textbooks here while taking the course. The Diffie Q's textbook is most heavily tied to this course, as because readings from that textbook will be posted each week. But to be completely honest, I never looked at any of these textbooks at all during the course, and I still managed to do pretty well. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in Math 256. I'm going to do my best to give a brief description of the main course concepts that you're going to learn in this course, but bear in mind that I was not the top student in this class by any means. You'll start with first order ODEs, which you should have seen a little bit of in Math 101. The two methods that you'll be using to solve first order ODEs will be the separation of variables, which you did in Math 101, and integrating factors. You'll then move on to second order ODEs, which expand on first order ODEs by adding a second derivative term in a differential equation. These second order ODEs can be classified into homogeneous and inhomogeneous ODEs. Basically, is the constant term in the differential equation a zero or not a zero? 
and these ODEs can either have real or complex roots. And you'll learn how the solutions to these ODEs change when these factors change. Next is systems of first and second order ODEs, which you might remember a little bit of in Math 152 or an equivalent linear algebra course. This is also where some of the linear algebra knowledge from that course will have to come back to you because you'll need to use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to find the solutions to these systems of ODEs. Next up are Laplace transforms, which is pretty much a way to turn an ODE into an algebraic equation in the frequency domain that is much easier to solve by hand, and then how to convert it back into a solution in the time domain. Laplace transforms also lead into learning about delta functions, convolutions, and transfer functions. Once you've covered that, Fourier series are up next. The main philosophy behind the concept of Fourier series is that every periodic function can be represented by a sum of sine and cosine functions. In this topic, you'll learn how to find the coefficients that make up a Fourier series from a periodic function. And lastly, you'll be covering solutions to partial differential equations or PDEs by separation of variables. PDEs are pretty much just relationships between the partial derivatives of functions of multiple variables. Some examples of this include the heat equation and the wave equation, and Math 253 will have already given you a good foundation of partial derivatives before you reach this topic. And that's pretty much everything you're going to learn in Math 256. In terms of the grading scheme for Math 256, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Honestly, it's really quite simple. Your homework assignments are weighted at 16%, your two midterm exams are weighted at 17% each, and your final exam is weighted at 50%. At the end of the term, your lowest homework assignment grade will be dropped. For Miranda's midterms, we had 50 minutes to write them, and they generally consisted of two to four multiple choice questions, with four to six longer response questions that you need to show your work for. For the final exam, we had two and a half hours to write it, and it consisted of 12 short answer questions worth a third of the total marks, and six long answer questions that were worth two thirds of the marks. Just like the midterms, the longer answer questions require you to show all your work and to explain your steps. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into Math 256. First things first, speaking from first-hand experience and from what I've heard about the other sections of Math 256, I'm being completely honest when I say try to avoid registering for Miranda's section if you can. Our section had homework that was way more difficult and took way longer compared to the other sections. We had harder midterm exams and her in-class teaching wasn't really exceptional. The only saving graces for Miranda's class were that her notes were actually really good. I was actually forced to understand the concepts that were being taught and our final exam was ridiculously easy compared to the other sections, and that kind of evened things out in the end. But if you don't want to suffer like I did throughout the term, try to choose a different section. However, if you do end up choosing Miranda's section because the other sections are full or because of timetable constraints, I would actually not recommend trying to take notes during class and instead copy her notes before class and then just passively listen during class to reinforce the learning. I did this personally and I ended up understanding the concepts a whole lot better and was much more well off compared to some of my friends who tried to just take notes during the lectures and they didn't really understand things too well. Regarding the course content itself, Math 256 is a very mechanical course. What I mean by this is that it's the type of course where you memorize how to do a certain question, you see it in the homework or on an exam, and you just start calculating. Kind of like Physics 170, Math 256 shares the same trait in that there's a big emphasis on just memorizing the process and then mechanically calculating the answer. There's not much intuition or conceptual theory behind Math 256, which is why doing as much practice as possible will ultimately help you do well in the course. And one last note about the exams, they were a lot harder for us compared to the other sections of Math 256, as our averages were in the 60% range, even after some slight scaling. 
I distinctly remember the first midterm for this course when there was like two minutes left and I thought I had attempted all the questions only to flip to the very back of the exam booklet and see one more question that was worth almost a quarter of the exam. It was definitely a mixture of difficult questions and just not enough time that led to that. And I think Miranda realized that a bit too late, which is why our final exam was just so much easier compared to the other sections. For context, it was the first final exam that I ever left early for. And that says a lot. And for those of you who are curious, I scored an 82% in Math 256, and the class average was 71%, which I was definitely surprised about considering our midterm averages and because our homework assignments were just really hard. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into Math 256. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that my next course that I'll be covering is ELEC 201. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.